My name is Jason Widmer. I'm the overall vehicle performance leader for the new Honda NSX. One of the first things you might notice when you see a high performance car like the new NSX is the exterior design. I think we can all agree that the, the NSX is quite stunning when it comes to that. What you may not notice is that underneath the surface there's a lot going on. It's a very sophisticated machine with a very sophisticated powertrain and uh, there's a lot of engineering that feeds into that that we had to integrate with the design of the car. The sport hybrid system that powers the new NSX is uh, very powerful of course which generates a lot of heat. One of the big tasks that we had on this car is getting fresh airflow in and out of the many heat exchangers that are scattered around the car. There are a total of 10 heat exchangers throughout this car making this task extremely difficult. The first thing we were challenged with is getting enough cooling air into the heat exchangers. So you'll notice that the front end of the car is quite open, allowing this air to come into the, to the car. But when you bring a lot of air into the car, what that does is creates a, a lifting effect on the car, which is not desirable for something such as the NSX that goes over 300 kilometers per hour. So for those of you that have been following the car from the initial concepts that were shown, you might notice that there have been additional vents added to the hood of the car as well as to the side of the car. These were very purposely placed uh, to provide uh, proper cooling effect and improve aerodynamics. This particular vent uh, was, came as part of our engineering studies and as you can imagine uh, engineers uh, are not always the, uh, the most aesthetically pleasing when it comes to design so we cut uh, holes within the hood, moved them around, uh, tried to find the optimum places to get the air to exit. Uh, of course, we turn that over to the designers, and the designers take our ideas and then make them very beautiful, such as this hood vent here. Uh, this one is uh, a very specific size and location to allow air to exit the radiators, coming up and out, and blending with the air that comes over the glass of the car. This vent not only uh, helps the aerodynamics, but it also helps the downforce by allowing the air to escape we can bring the front end of the car down, giving that positive downforce on the front end of the car. Another such vent that had a big role in this is this vent on the side of the car here. Uh, we specifically placed this here at the fender well uh, to get the air to blend with the air coming over the front fender and underneath the wing. And this plays a big role in getting the air cleanly down the car to the openings in the rear of the car. Another vent that's very important uh, has to do with wheel wake management and uh, what happens here in the wheel well is that the wheel performs a little bit like a turbine and you've probably seen uh, either renditions or videos of cars where the air is spilling out of here what happens is that turbulent air then comes down the side of the car like this and uh, goes on this this is uh, somewhat acceptable with passenger cars but in our case having an engine in the rear and a very advanced cooling system in the rear, it's important to manage this air and get it tightly to the side of the car. For this purpose, we have a very specific vent here in the front fascia with an a air catcher here that takes this high pressure air, brings it into the wheel wake management vent, exiting and pushing this air that's normally spilling out and tightening it to the side of the car and allowing it to flow seamlessly down the side of the car and into the rear openings. So the reason it was so critical to manage this air from the front of the car is because we're utilizing this air in the rear of the car to cool. Uh, if we had not managed this properly, at times we were considering having to bring this vent significantly out, allowing it to catch more air, uh, but obviously that intrudes upon the good aerodynamics and affects the overall exterior design. By managing this air very well, we were able to tighten this up minimizing the opening space but still getting all of the proper airflow needed for cooling of the car. This vent takes the air and sends it in three primary directions. Uh, the first and largest portion of the air is going through the intercoolers. We have intercoolers positioned on both sides of the car. Of course these cool the turbocharger air allowing us to maintain high and optimum performance from the engine. Second portion of the air is actually feeding the intake with fresh air uh, into the engine giving this cooled air and allowing us to achieve high performance. And then the third portion is going into the engine room 
uh, to help manage the temperatures and the heat that's generated around the engine and the components around the engine. Just like in the front of the car, in the rear of the car, it is very important to manage the air as it exits the car. We're sending a lot of air into the engine room and into the wheel wells, and we need to get that air out efficiently and optimized for aerodynamic flow. Uh, one of the first places you'll, uh, where we send the air out is on top of the taillights here. Uh, it's not very noticeable at first glance, but if you reach in here, there's an opening. Uh, this is allowing this lower speed and lower pressure air that's within the engine room to exit here and blend with the high speed and high pressure air that's coming over the deck lid. And what it does is it brings this air down, creating downforce on the rear of the car and also uh, reducing the wake area that's behind the car. The wake area is the biggest contributor to the drag of the car and anything we can do to minimize that wake is giving us a better CD. So we get downforce and CD reduction from this upper opening. Another area that's very critical is to the side here. Uh, just like in the front, the wheel well, it's important to evacuate that air. For those of you that follow GT racing, you've probably noticed some of the cars actually have this section completely cut away to allow this air to, to easily exit. On a street car, uh, that's not as feasible. So we have this uh, rear fascia, but we've still uh, utilizing the same principle of giving a big opening to allow that air to escape. It's coming across the silencers, cooling the silencers, and also grabbing this air from the side, pulling it in, and allowing it to reduce the wake area and the drag in the back. The third and largest opening is here across the center. This is uh, allowing the air to escape from the engine room, bringing all that hot air out. It's accelerated by the high-speed air that's coming underneath the car from the diffuser. This air is coming up, sucking this air out, again reducing the, air, uh, reducing the wake area behind the car, and causing a downforce effect on the rear. All of these work in conjunction to provide us with a very efficient rear airflow, minimized wake for low CD, and finally to improve the downforce on the rear of the car. We do have positive front and rear downforce, which is very important to high speed stability when you're dealing with a car that travels at over 300 kph.